going to introduce excuse me, our speaker for this evening. Um, Caitlin is the Education Programs Manager and responsible for planning and facilitating educational programs for learners of all ages and abilities at the Naples Town Gardens. These programs include standards-based school field trips, Wonder, a drop-in program for families, Making in the Garden, a therapeutic horticulture program for adults with dementia and their care partners, Sensory Friendly Saturdays, a free extended hour program for families with children who have sensory sensitivities, and Color Greens, the Garden School and Community Garden Network. Caitlin is also responsible for growing plants used in educational programs and teaching sections of the garden. Caitlin earned a Bachelor of Arts in Environmental Studies from Florida North Coast University in 2017, and is currently pursuing a Master's Degree in Environmental Nutrition from the University of Memphis. So with that, please join me in welcoming Caitlin. Okay, we're very excited to be here. I'm going to step back here real quick and close the blinds so you can see the screen. One second. All right, I'm going to take just one second to change the screen share to be my presentation. All right, I hope everybody can see this on um, the virtual world here. <laughs> thank you all for um, attending us virtually as well. Um, so thank you, Karen, Maureen, and the Florida Native Science Society for having me here. Um, I'm Caitlin, um, and I've been at the Garden for five years now. Um, I celebrated my five-year anniversary last weekend, um, which is uh, Quite an accomplishment for me. I've definitely grown a lot here at the garden. I started as an intern and then um, quickly worked up to be the uh, programs manager. And I definitely love my job. <laughs> um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about um, many ways the garden and you, um, how we can connect youth to the natural world because that's a very important thing to do. Um, does anybody here have uh, kids in your lives? Or the best family or the neighbors or <laughs> students. Yeah, awesome. So we all have we all know at least one kid. <laughs> so um, I'm going to uh, answer four questions today. Um, so first I'm going to share a little bit a little bit about who we are as the garden and um, what exactly the sample garden is. Just so you can be familiar with who we are as um, an organization and then a little bit about what we do. So how we connect youth and then how you can connect youth. So I'm going to share some um, best practices and some ideas um, uh, as like learning experiences from, from us. <laughs> All righty. All right, so some fast facts about the garden first. Um, so first, um, so we're if you're totally unfamiliar with the garden, we are young and we are big. As you can see on the screen here, um, the garden as a whole is 170 acres. Um, 90 of those are managed natural areas. Uh, we have walking trails through five different native habitats, um, along with some design gardens, which is about like 80 of those 170. Um, altogether, we have about two miles of walking paths and a delicious cafe, if you've ever eaten there before, with our summer menu just started. Today is the first day of summer. Um, so you can really spend the whole day here. Um, so we are a private nonprofit organization. We're not part of any park system. Um, about 60% of our revenue comes from philanthropy. So what exactly is a botanical garden? So this is like a big question. Um, so before we get into what we do for the youth, I thought this would be important to know. Um, our professional organization, the 
Botanic Gardens uh, Conservation International, BGCI, defines botanic gardens as institutions for holding documented collections, um, living plants for the purposes of scientific research, conservation, display, and education. And I bolded those words right there because they are very um, important in the work that we do and they drive um, the mission of the garden. So this documentation of collections is what makes us more like a museum um, rather than a park. So, you know, like in the art museum has documented art collections, and the art collections is plants, um, uh, native regionally appropriate plants, um, mainly of the tropics and subtropics. Um, has anybody ever been to the garden before? Good. Um, oh, all of us. That's awesome. Um, so, uh, these art plant, art plant collection is cataloged and database and curated. Um, so, this is a very important process to know, you know, what we what we have here. Um, we're not just free landscaping, <laughs> you know, that is a, a critical component to bring people in. Um, so our collections are valuable because gardens are repositories of genetic material. So how exactly does the garden connect you to the natural world? So scientific research, conservation, and display are all important to talk about, um, but we're going to focus on education, that other bulleted word in that last slide. Um, so let's learn about how we do so through education. So we connect plants, our collections, our natural areas, and the work of horticulture and conservation uh, teams to people like you and our youth audience. Um, we do that through school education programs, visitor education, professional training opportunities um, for uh, professionals in the area. So what does the youth experience look like? Um, we have many opportunities for young people to connect to the natural world. Uh, many of the kids that visit us, um, they come either on a school field trip or they come with their families um, for like our informal drop-in programming. So here on this slide here, we just list some of what we do um, from formal to informal uh, programming. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna break down each one of these. So if you don't finish reading this, it's okay. <laughs> All right, so let's start with school field trips. Um, so our field trips uh, connect to the state standards um, for the life science benchmarks. Um, so we serve all ages, abilities, school types, um, through our field trips. And some of our popular field trips include uh, Wild Florida Explorers, Dirt Me My Lunch, Budding Botanists, and uh, more. So I'm going to try to look off those three. They're kind of my favorite. <laughs> um, so Wild Florida Explorers is our K through five program where students get to um, explore pollinators life cycle up close. Um, so they get to test their knowledge. We like to ask them, who's a butterfly expert? And they all raise their hand. And then we do a little question and answer format for this field trip where we start by what kind of animal is a butterfly? So we talk about insects. They are an insect. What do they have in common with other insects? Then we talk about the body parts. So they have a head. They have legs. How many legs? Six. Um, they have wings. How many wings? Something. Two. But it's actually four. <laughs> and that surprises them. Um, so it's, it's really fun to really let them be the experts that they think they are and they can learn um, more information. So um, during that um, question and answer format, we show live uh, specimens. So we collect caterpillars, chrysalids, um, butterflies, eggs throughout the garden the morning of, and we get to show that during the chat. So they get to see it up close. And then after um, the talk, we go on a pollinator observation. So they get to walk through the garden and uh, see pollinators in action. It's a lot of fun. And then so I got two screens here. Um, another favorite field trip is called Dirt Made My Lunch. So this is where students get to learn about edible plants. Um, so they can learn about the familiar ones, so any vegetables like peppers, tomatoes, carrots, and the unfamiliar. Um, so we tour them around the garden, and some plants we stop by are the perennial lettuce palm, 
which is a palm that is responsible for making um, fruit snacks chewy. So it produces a wax on the palm, and it also is responsible for coating uh, shiny candies like Tic Tacs. Um, so we have a little props for them to see the, um, the connection. So they can see a familiar object like the fruit snacks bag, and then they see the plant next to it and make that connection. And then, um, as you can see in this picture, they have an activity linked to this field trip. So they need to pot up their own tomato seedling and learn how to take care of it. So they can bring it back home or to school. They have a school garden. Um, or they can, you know, start their own garden at home if they don't have one. Um, it just further connects them to, you know, where our food comes from and just gets their hands dirty. Because <laughs> that's important. <laughs> Uh, this field trip, Budding Botanist, is our field trip specialist program. So it's um, designed in particular for fourth grade only. Um, we collaborated with the school district on uh, creating this program back in 2011. And it's a, I guess you could say, hybrid type of program. So they spend some time inside and outside to learn about pollinators, seed dispersal, flower parts, and uh, native plants. Um, it's co-led with teachers. Um, teachers have to pass and go through a training in order to um, complete this program. But teachers teach um, indoor labs of a flower dissection and like seed investigation. And then educators, uh, my team, we teach those students outside in the field. Um, so they do the pollinator observation in the native plant scavenger hunt, like you see in this picture. Um, this is definitely one of the most fun field trips, I would say, because uh, it's an all-day experience. Um, they they spend their entire day here from like nine to one. And then next, um, so this program um, is currently called Collier Greens, but we're going to be changing the name um, over the summer. It's our school garden um, and community garden support program, where it's more it's, it's mostly kind of like a teach the teacher model. We don't directly interact with kids through this, but kids benefit indirectly <laughs> from it. Um, so we educate groups of garden leaders in the area about how to start and maintain a small garden whether that's a home garden or a school garden, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, all are welcome. And um, this program was built in 2011, so it's been around for about 11 years now. And um, it's free, it's completely free to participate. There's workshops uh, where uh, groups can come and meet, learn a different gardening topic throughout the season, pick up some free plants to bring back to their garden. And then they can like learn curriculum collect, uh, connections, um, different activities to do with their students or kids in their lives. All right, so this is um, one of our informal daily programs. It's called Wonder. Um, now, Wonder is an acronym, as you can see on the image here for Walk, Observe, Navigate, Draw, Explore, and Read. Now, this is a monthly thematic program. Um, each month, there's a different theme focused on some environmental science topic. So today is June 1st. Um, June is our popular pollinator theme. So kids need to come to an activity table located in the garden and learn anything about uh, pollinators. They have activities like painting a monarch butterfly, um, pollinator scavenger hunts, um, a yard and craft of basically building a butterfly. Um, it's within storybooks that are related to the theme. So, um, just there's always about like eight to ten activities that we provide for hands on learning. And during the pandemic, um, we had to kind of recreate that program into something self guided um, as we weren't interacting with groups yet. Um, so we developed Wonder Activity Packs, where basically it's that drop-in program all wrapped up into a nice to-go pack, where families can pick up at the ticketing window when they enter the garden. Now, even though we're, you know, back open, we're kind of like back to normal, what are normal means nowadays, 
um, we still have these because they have been such a big hit. Um, so they are uh, made after or made from the in-person program. So it's the same theme, same type of activities, um, but a little more. They have um, like an activity sheet that um, have you ever like been to a restaurant and like a kid's placement of activities? So we have something similar to that inside here, but it's all related to the theme. Um, I don't have a prop with me, I'm sorry, <laughs> as an example, but it's literally a high of fun. My April team designs it, so um, all of the graphics and coloring pages and everything they see is designed in-house. Um, and they get, uh, so some, like an example of what they have inside, uh, say the Junior Nature Journal, which is exactly what it sounds like, it's a nature journal with prompts that can lead them through the garden to um, connect with the natural world. Um, and then they also have colored pencils provided, um, crafts, and other activities. So awesome. All right. Um, so Family Wonder Days um, is our most recent uh, family event that happened this past weekend. It's our first one ever, and um, it was quite a success. Uh, so this program is basically a celebration of our Daily Wonder program. So we have six stations throughout the garden that focus on the, on the acronym. So we have a walk station, an observe station, a navigate station, and each one has different activities. So you see in this picture here, this is our read station. So we have a comic book story um, that followed a cat character named Twiggy through the garden. It's the garden's wonder pal. And um, that is story got all jumbled up. So kids had to look at the stickers, read the story, and piece it together. And um, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Um, other activities included here, we had a navigate station. Um, it was like a determine your wingspan, learn your flat rate, basically become a bird. Um, and they had to fly around the garden as this bird. Um, they had to observe insects up close, observe pollinators, and um, yes, I think I covered everything for that. So, like I said, this was our newest family event. Um, we had over 230 kids visit us over these two days. Um, and most of them were new families had never been to the garden before, which was awesome. And um, it, was, it was just great to see them all interact with each other in the garden um, all day. <laughs> it, it was fun. This took over a year of planning, and it was just great to see um, it become a success. And we're definitely going to do it again next year. So I'm going to cover some things that you guys can do to help connect youth, um, kind of modeled after what I showed you. So some good um, ideas starts with nature journal. Has anyone heard of nature journals before? Maybe a little bit of us. You don't have to be artistic to the nature journal. It's basically descriptive writing and descriptive doodling. Um, this right here are examples of a nature journaling group that we have, um, but I use them for uh, examples for, for kids. So when you go out into your, um, whether you're at a school or home, your backyard, your neighborhood park, wherever, um, you can bring a little notebook with you, raise some color pencil, and just sit and observe and um, see what's happening around you. We like to encourage kids to be descriptive. Um, so use your adverbs, use your adjectives um, to describe what you see. Because if you look back in your nature journal and you don't have those, those descriptors, you won't really know what you experienced that day uh, that you forget. Um, so we like to connect nature journaling to students in the sense that scientists do this. Um, when scientists go out in the field, they um, uh, take note of the weather, the time of day, the date, what their surroundings are like, so they know exactly what happened on a given um, observation. So this is a great way to um, get kids outside. Some example prompts, if you would like, <laughs> if you're interested in nature journaling. So these we use in our, our junior nature journals. Um, so some prompts like, what is the weather like today? 
Imagine you're an insect crawling or flying through the garden. Who are you and what do you see? If you are one inch tall, describe your experience. You can draw or write these answers. <laughs> um, so you can also do find a flower that has five petals and draw it. Um, we like to add a little joke in this one. So what does the bee say to the flower? Oh, sweetie, find a bee sitting on the flower and draw it. So make it fun. <laughs> Um, another activity you could do is pollinator observation. Um, so I know I talked about this a lot <laughs> during the presentation, but it's one of our um, most active and successful activities throughout many types of programs that we do here at the garden uh, for multi um, ages too. Um, so you can like nature journal your pollinator observation. You could just write, um, take pictures also. Um, you can have a Polaroid camera, take pictures of what you see, and you can like scrap up with that. Um, but just like nature journaling, this is a great way to be um, observant in the natural world. Um, you could do flower dissections. So if you have a flower garden or um, flowers that are safe to use, maybe in your neighbor, uh, neighborhood, um, you can collect some and start dissecting them and learn the parts of a flower. So these pictures are directly from our Buddy Botanist program, that fourth grade program I talked about earlier. So this is their inside, um, their indoor lab portion. So this student is literally dissecting the flower, taking every part of it um, apart. <laughs> and they line it up on their paper here and they, they label all the parts. You can be that extreme where you can just observe the flower as it is. Um, but you know, with kids like being hands on, um, you can't really learn anything unless you're hands on or you put it into practice. Um, so, flower dissection is a great way to learn the parts of a flower. And then, gardening at school or home is, it seems obvious, <laughs> um, but this one is a good one um, to. Um, connect kids to the outdoors. Um, most of them are afraid to get dirty nowadays, and you know, just encourage them that the dirt is good, it's healthy for you. Whenever we do our um, Derby Line Lunch Field Trip, we're doing that hunting activity, kids are like, ah, it's dirt. And they have dirt on their hands and they like freak out. But you know, we say it's okay, you can get dirty, you're gonna wash your hands when you're done. Um, so that's how we kind of just encourage them that it's okay to be dirty. And so have any of these um, suggestions any like resonated with anybody? I have a question. Yeah. Um, the call your greens, mm -hmm. the, the vegetable or the edible garden mm -hmm. are do you have anything that's specifically native, like Florida native edibles? We do um, in the summertime, we, we provide suggestions, but we don't necessarily provide the plants. Um, but we definitely provide suggestions and resources on how to find them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? All right, so at the garden, we believe that we're a force for good. Um, so that directs the work that we do um, and the access that we want to create uh, for collections and our expertise. Um, so young people are our future. Um, so we aim to inspire new interests in the natural world um, and the youth that visit us so they can make a positive impact uh, on the world ahead of them. Um, and I hope I inspired you all to do the same tonight. Um, I can answer any questions that you have. I have my contact info up there if you need more um, information from the work that we do here at the garden, the programs that I lead. I also have business cards um, if you're interested in taking one. But yeah, that's, that's me. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Um, if wanted to pick up one of the wonder packets, mm -hmm. where would those be located? So we have them at our ticketing windows. Um, so as you enter the garden, you'll pass by them and you can pick them up. And um, 
if you're interested in um, like maybe a small batch, maybe like 15 and 20, you definitely let me know and I can get them for you. Yeah, if you have like a classroom or, or just even a smaller amount, I hate some for you. Do we have to be a kid? <laughs> no, no, just adults. I like to do that. They're a lot of fun. Um, no, you don't have to be a kid. There's all different types of activities. So, mm -hmm. how did you measure the results of your training programs? That's a good question. How do I measure those results? Just talking one slide about it. Mm -hmm. Um. So one of our, our big things in our mission is um, that we uh, inspire like positive behavior change in our community, but in whatever program, like it's an adult program or a youth program. Um, and a returning visit is a good way to show um, success in the program. Um, is there like a particular program that you're interested in? Well, you know, not that it's specific, but the way you use to to measure the mm -hmm. the programs as they are uh, designed are working. I yeah, mean, you know that. that yeah, um, so some of them are the goals here. Mm -hmm. or did you know that you are reaching this goal. Yeah, that's a definitely a question we ask ourselves often. Um, it, it depends on the program, really. Um, so like our one of our activity tasks. Um, we try to reach out for feedback and we see families use them in the garden on a daily basis and um, returning for more. And um, it, it really depends on the program. Like some, some of our formal programs, we um, request feedback like through a survey to see if it was beneficial to the recipient and if they have any changes and we make those changes. And like for our field trips, since there's a uh, standard space, we um, work with the school district uh, regularly to make sure that we're still meeting the, the standards. Mm -hmm. um, could you explain more about your teacher training programs, trainer trainer, how many people you've trained and how many people they've trained? So you're probably referring to call your names? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to change names you said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, uh, so it's a, like a seasonal workshop program. So folks sign up for it, they come and they learn the topic, whatever that is for the year. So that like gardening one-on-one, um, how to harvest, how to, um, co curriculum collect, uh, connections, um, how to write recipes, how to write a grant, stuff like that, um, for planning the garden. Um, so it's not like a formal training, it's just like a workshop you come to learn something and you see you use. You have to give CEUs for it. Not not for that program. That is something that we've been um, talking about because we want to we're trying to build a professional development program, um, not just for teachers, but for uh, professionals in the community. So like land developers, landscape architects. Um, uh, people in the like the county system. So we're currently building that program. Um, CEUs is something that we have discussed on doing, and we're exploring that that route. We just haven't um, finalized it yet. But we don't offer CEUs for the Five Springs program. I'm sorry, I really did not hear, but mm -hmm. is it, do, do I understand that it doesn't, it, this doesn't cost anything? Correct. Correct. Yeah, all of those programs, so someone can just sign up and bring well, children or um, someone else through the school. Mm -hmm. So, the question was about the cost of our programs. Um, the Collier Greens program I mentioned earlier, the school learning program, that is free, everything about it is free. Um, you just sign up, you attend, and you uh, use the resources that we provide. Our school field trips um, have a cost. Um, but we offer scholarships to like Title I schools, and um, our fellowship costs is about five dollars a student, and the adults are free within a ratio of like students to teachers. Um, our garden daily programs, our informal stuff like the water program, um, that's included with garden admission. So you have to get a ticket to get inside the gate, and then you can explore the garden and explore that program. Um, or if you remember, you have those benefits too. 
So there's no like additional cost, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Say, um, so I took my kids out to explore the Everglades, and one of the rangers at one of their welcome centers was um, a younger girl, and she said, you know, she's kind of what really stuck with her is that she went out to the Everglades and walked through the swamp. Mm -hmm. And like what your comment was about kids not wanting to get dirty, you know, because their parents are afraid of it, and it just goes down the line. Um, I, I just really agree with that statement, like letting kids know that they can get dirty yes. and that they can go into a swamp and not be afraid of it. For a lot of us, native plants, conservation goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So not being afraid of the woods allows them to have an appreciation for it. Yes. So I really commend you on, you know, promoting mm -hmm. that. You know, getting kids not to be afraid. Yes, <laughs> yeah, this is very important. <laughs> yes, be, be the model, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Anything else? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think it is because um, it's, it's nothing about the presentation, but about you, mm -hmm. about your the stuff that you are are on the. The picking now mm -hmm. it's nutritional environmental nutrition environmental nutrition. About. yeah so um currently uh, it's, it's environmental nutrition and it's basically about like food systems how they work um sustainable food systems um, there's even uh like humanitarian nutrition was a, was a class that i took um, a couple semesters ago where you're basically learning about food justice and um, food access around the world so it's like a range of things. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I've never heard of it either. I've just stumbled upon it, and it's, it was exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> it's at University of Memphis, oh, and it's an online program. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I had the same question before you. We were talking about it, mm -hmm. and we were both wondering. So yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's a great program. Mm -hmm. Anything else? All right, I'll turn it over to Robert. Hello. All right, thank you everyone online for joining us. I will um, go ahead and start the morning, and we're going to be doing our plant raffle. So for those of you online, thank you again, and we hope to see you again in August, which will be our next. Mm -hmm.